James Wannis, thank you for joining me today. This is Anarchist Wines. We have a white wine blend as well as a red wine blend. And I'll tell you all about these wines in just one moment, so stay tuned. James Wannis, thank you for joining me at my tasting table. Anarchist Wines are next. To me, this is a really wonderful place to visit. They have a tasting room at Vista Colina, which is a resort in the southern portion of Napa. And what I like about it is there's about four or five other producers that have tasting rooms there. So you can go to one place and taste all these different wines. And there's a nice patio area or a green area in the summertime. And on Sundays, I believe, there's live music. So it's a really nice place to visit. What it represents to me specifically and meaningful to me was during pandemic, it was one of the few places one could visit easily. That could not be said for most of Napa Valley and Sonoma County. Yes, there are portions when it was completely closed, but it was nice to come here because other places that I relied upon visiting were very difficult to visit for a lot of reasons. So I'm gonna read a bit of the sentiment on the cork itself. It says, we embrace individuals and events that move and shape the trajectory of human history. The art of each bottle presents a graphic expression of consequence against a landscape of the status quo, Anarchist Wine Company. So I have another review right up here that is of a Grenache wine. I'll place that video right up here. And uh, so we're gonna start off first with the white wine, which is a Sonoma Coast wine. And I uh, love the bottling. I think the, the artwork is fantastic. Um, very familiar uh, A with the Anarchist uh, logo here. Uh, and you're gonna see right here, it's imaginary friend. So uh, here's more information on bottling itself. Now this wine is 53% Chardonnay, 45% Viognier, 1% Pinot Gris, and 1% Sauvignon Blanc, $20 suggested retail price point, 13.5% ABV. And uh, I think it's such a, a harmonious wine where I would think that uh, obviously when you're gonna have Viognier, especially at 45%, sometimes that can overtake and overrepresent itself and be overly floral. But I think in this way, it's nicely balanced because of the Chardonnay. And uh, so the 2% Pinot uh, Gris and Sauvignon Blanc, um, also add to that constituency of balancing out that wine, in my opinion, because I think any more Viognier on this wine would be overexpressed in the Viognier camp and perhaps overexpressed in being a Viognier dominant wine. And so I think the winemaker is being very conscious of that as well. Uh, dried citrus as well as white peach and floral notation. Next is the palate characterization. So this is white stone fruit, as well as almond, a hint of spice note, and a nice, lovely, soft, uh, and very delicate floral finish. This wine is 92 points out of 100 points. Next is a red wine called Freudian Slip. Now it's Freudian Slip. I'll just pour some in my wine glass. So here is the label for Freudian Slip, the red California wine, 2017 vintage. I love the um, beautiful packaging here. I think the artwork is outstanding. And uh, first of all, I'm gonna show you a picture of how I got these bottles and uh, very much of a Halloween uh, motif. So I'm not always excited when I get a box of wine to open up. And yeah, sometimes it's more exciting than others and maybe it's the brand you're anticipating or maybe it's a surprise such as this right here. Now this wine is a composition of the following grape varieties. That is 57% Sangiovese, 19% Cabernet Sauvignon, 19% Pinot Noir, 2% Viognier, 2% Givert Cetamina, and 1% Sauvignon Blanc. And so 2017 vintage, this is about 14.5% ABV. And something that's quite unexpected is that I think it's a nice harmony of Sangiovese to the Cabernet Sauvignon and the often never, almost never blended Pinot Noir. So to get these together is a surprise along with the white wine varieties. In Australia, you'll see the Viognier uh, at 2% say for a Shiraz wine. So that does add something to it. It's a long tradition that you see in Australian wines. And so this could be that California interpretation in a way. And I think it actually does something to the wine itself to make it a, a pretty remarkably different and interesting wine. So a very nice vitreous quality to this wine. Notation of violets is very evident. A bit of that Pinot Noir-esque uh, dark cherry note, uh, strawberry note as well. And uh, additional notes on this are, I would say autumnal forest and uh, suede leathery notes, which I very much enjoy, and spice box. And next is the palette characterization. Now it's a nice cellar temperature for this wine. I think it's coming across remarkably well. The palate is giving notes of mountain strawberry, a bit of uh, bing or tart cherry notes. Along with that, it's gonna be some spice notation, a hint of ground clove, 
as well as uh, violet. So this wine is 92 points out of 100 points. More information on the producer down below. You can visit them without an appointment. And uh, I definitely recommend it, especially if you're staying in that area. It's a really nice place to visit. Superbly nice staff every single time I've been there. And uh, I think all their wines are just full of surprises and full of nice, interesting ways of displaying California wines. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. Give a like to this video, subscribe to this channel. Be sure to share this video with someone who would be interested in these wines. So thank you again for watching. Be sure to share this video with somebody who would be interested in these wines. Thank you for watching. I appreciate your support. Come back to the Stacy table for more. I have more video reviews to come. Thank you again. I will see you very soon. Sante.